I'm Carlene Rose and welcome to a Nerdy Yoga YouTube channel. Today we are going to start our flow in a comfortable seated position. So I'm just sitting here uh, on my knees with my feet tucked underneath me. You can sit in a uh, cross-legged position, however is most comfortable for you. You can sit on a block, whatever the case may be. But I want you to start inhaling. We're going to activate our Mula Bandha breath. So inhaling your low belly, your breathing diaphragm, and your pelvic diaphragm. Expand all of that and kind of think 360 direction. So expand in all directions. Wide belly, lots of space to, for the air to fill in your lungs and exhale, squeeze everything in and out from the base of your belly all the way out. Exhaling through your nose. So inhale here, exhale, big sound out of your nose. Kind of like you're trying to fog up window. And start doing some cat cow in this position. Just mini bends in the back. Starting to warm up our spine. And starting to use our breath to control our movement. So inhaling here, exhale. So you still want to keep that breath going even through your entire movement practice. And last time here, awesome. Now from here, you're going to come onto your hands and knees. So we'll be in a tabletop position. You can leave your toes um, tucked or flat on the earth, whatever is most comfortable. And we'll take that cat cow a little deeper. So inhaling here, exhale, inhale. Exhale, getting a bigger arch in the spine, both directions. So we're basically doing a back bend here and then arching your spine. Again, really using our breath to control this movement. And this time as you exhale and arch your spine, lift your knees off the ground just a little bit. Inhale here. Inhale, inhale, exhale, starting to engage our core a bit more as we do this, just hovering our knees, and exhale, holding this here, waving your spine long, keeping length in your spine as you hold this for just a couple more breaths. And bending your elbows to exhale, press yourself all the way back to down dog. Very nice from here, pedaling out your feet. Starting to open up and warm up the backs of your legs. Very nice. Now from here, I want you to bend your knees and your elbows. You're going to wave yourself forward, so really lengthening your spine, coming into a high plank. Come onto your knees for a diagonal chaturanga. Lower here to the earth. Inhale, prepare, rolling your shoulders down and back, um, creating space again for your neck. And exhaling, waving yourself in and up to cobra. You can even come to a low cobra if that feels better for you. And exhale, all the way back to your down dog. Now just slight bend in your knees. Wave your spine long, create lots of space in your spine and your neck, and then exhale, letting your heels make their way to the earth naturally, letting gravity do the work here. Holding this for a couple of breaths, you can even take a lion's breath or a sigh, stick out your tongue. Your tongue is the... Uh, Top of your deep core line, so we're still activating our core when we're doing that lion's breath. So have fun with that one, take it whenever you need. And from here, you're going to inhale, bending your knees and elbows again. Right leg lifts to the sky. From here, rotate your hips to the side and let your right foot just fall behind you. Starting to stretch out your hip flexors, getting into the front of your legs. You may notice your standing legs starting to open and stretch more. And from here, square off your hips. Now you are going to bring your knee through your core plank, so lift up into your chest, 
but plant it on the outside of your right arm. And you're just gonna hold that here. Really pressing away from the earth with your hands, lifting up through your belly, through that deep core. Holding that for one more breath. And inhale back to down dog. And exhale. This time bring it through core plank and step your right foot to meet your right thumb. Inhale here, prepare a long spine. You're going to bend your back knee, roll yourself in and up. And inhale here, you'll do three fists of fire. So inhale, extend towards the sky, exhale, lunging both knees, fists come to low belly for fists of fire. Last one here. Very nice, this time inhale, exhale, bring your hands to the earth. This time walk your uh, right hand to the inside of the right foot. We are going to grab the back foot down like a warrior. So inhaling here, we're gonna start getting into our right inner thigh. So fold yourself into the earth, bend your back knee a little, and extend the left arm up. Now from here, we'll do some arm circles. So loosen up shoulder tension and getting into the stretch a little bit more dynamically. So exhale, circling down and back, again, bending your back knee. And as you extend, you can even see if that right front foot will stretch a little farther. Exhale. Coming into the stretch, finding that first edge of stretch for the inner thigh. And exhale last time, lifting up. Exhale, circling down as you bend that front leg again. This time, planting your feet on either side, lifting your right knee into the chest. Really quick, plant it on the back or on the side of your right arm again. Hold that for another breath. And extend your right leg to the sky. Exhale, plant it down. Very nice. Pedaling out your feet here, noticing the difference between your right and left leg. Now from here, bending your knees and elbows, we'll go through that vinyasa again. So waving yourself forward to your high plank, coming through your diagonal chaturanga, inhaling here, prepare, waving in and up, and exhale to down dog, and slight bend in your knees and elbows this time as you lift left leg to the sky, open your hips to the left this time, your left foot fall behind you. You can even take a lion's breath when we're in this upside down pose. Hold this for just one more breath. And then square your hips back off to the earth, slowly coming through that core plank, bending your knees and elbows to give you that room. And left leg plants in the upper left arm this time. Pressing away from the earth, really lifting up through your belly. One last breath here, inhaling back up to the sky. Exhale, come through center this time as you plant your left foot towards your left thumb. Inhale, prepare a long spine, bending your back knee, rolling yourself in and up to that high lunge position. You're gonna inhale, extending everything. Exhale, fists of fire lunges. Last one here. Inhale, extend your arms long. Exhale, plant your left foot underneath your left shoulder inside of your, or your left hand, excuse me, underneath your left shoulder inside of your left foot. Right foot comes down like a warrior. Bending close to the earth. Right arm extends to the sky. And circling down and back, so bending everything. And as you extend your arms, see if that front left leg wants to stretch a little bit. A couple more circles here, really using your breath to guide your movement. And last one. Them. Now bending your left leg as you plant your hands on either side of it, really ground into the earth, left leg lifts up to your core, 
comes back to your upper outer arm, holding it for another few breaths. And left leg extends to the sky. Exhale, comes back to the earth, pedaling out your feet again. And bending everything, waving yourself forward to plank. Coming onto your knees, lowering through your diagonal chaturanga. Inhale here, prepare. Rolling yourself in and up. And exhale back to down dog. Very nice. Now from here, come onto your knees. You're just going to leave your toes pointed underneath you for a second as we sit on our heels. Give our arms and wrists a bit of a break. Stretch out the bottom of our feet. Uh, you can massage out your forearms, that feels good, and massage out your wrist, do that on the other side. Now from here, we are going to challenge ourselves with a crow pose. So the warm up we did with our legs, putting our leg on the outer upper arm, that was to help prepare us for crow. We will use that same technique in our crow pose, and I want you to remember the lift that it required for you to keep your arm there because now we're gonna try it with both of our legs at the same time. So, take your fingers, plant them strongly onto the earth. Um, lightest amount of pressure on the heel of your hand, you almost want that to be no pressure. You want uh, mostly your fingertips gripping into the earth, as well as the ring of your palm. That's where your strength is gonna come from uh, with, this, with this pose, and really any time that you have your hands on the mat. And then from here, come into basically a crow pose preparation or like a molasses squat almost. So come onto your toes. Your hands are planted. I want you to think about putting your knees on the upper outer arms like we did during our vinyasa. From here, we're going to use that same lift that we did when we were standing. So you had your leg back that time, but you were still really lifting in and up through all of your deep core muscles, the front of your low belly, the front of your uh, low back spine. So think about engaging all of those muscles kind of in the same way with both of your legs. So you'll start in this position. You've got your hands firmly planted. You have your um, legs to the your outer arms. And you can find wherever is comfortable. Some people do their crow here. Some people do more of a crane and do it on the inside of their arms. I like them kind of just at the outside as high as I can get. And you want to think about pressing your knees in towards each other while pressing your shoulders away. So I'll face you so you can see it for a second. So if we are grounded like this, you've got your arms pushing in, but your shoulders pushing out. This is gonna create a really strong lock between your legs and your arms and give you a lot more lift and flying action. So we'll start grounding our hands. You're on your toes. Your legs and arms are pressing into each other. You have really strong lock on the ground and between your legs and arms. Now from here, you're gonna lift a little higher on your toes. Now you'll notice as I did that, I really lifted in and up with that low belly, same way that I was when I was doing my plank with my one leg on the outer arm. And your heart is basically like laser pointing at the earth. So it's not necessarily about lifting up from here, it's about just leaning forward a little bit more. at this point, if you have all of those locks and you're already engaging your deep spine, you're already doing all the lift that you really need to do. So you start with the hands, you start with the arm and leg position, you come onto your toes, really engaging your front low belly and your front low back spine, lifting in and up. And then from here, heart plants or faces firmly towards the floor. You just lean yourself a little bit forward and then your feet can lift off the ground. And you can try this, of course, with one foot off the ground. You can lift up, um, you know, just one at a time as you're building strength. You know, maybe you only lift for a second. And as you develop that more and get more into it, it's a fun pose once you get there. Maybe you can hold it and have fun with tapping your toes or whatever you want to do. So have fun playing with that. Wherever you are, though, we're going to come back to our sitting on our toes position. Well, once you're done, you can hit pause, play around with crow some more. <laughs> but once you're done, we'll do that massage and wrist stretch again because it feels
feels oh so good. Then from here, coming back to our down dog, stretching out our feet. And from here, weaving yourself forward, moving all of that energy through your whole body, lowering through your diagonal chaturanga. And exhale. Very nice. From here, you can walk your feet towards your hands. Come into a forward fold for a moment. And make your way to a seated position, coming onto the mat. Windshield wiper your legs. It's a great release for your low back. You can even do a lion's breath again while you're here calming down. And take your right ankle, place it above your left knee, really keeping your right knee extended out long. We'll do a quick stretch here. Right foot is flexed to help protect your knee. You can stay here if this is enough of a stretch or find a comfortable place to grab onto the left leg and pull your foot and knee a bit closer to your left shoulder. And you can stay here a couple more breaths or if you wanna try this kind of fun, funky variation, you can keep your knees close to you and just drop your left knee and right foot towards the earth. So you have kind of a side body twist stretch, but it'll get into your hips a little bit differently, as well as getting a little bit of a twist. You can even drop your right knee a little bit closer to you at this point. You don't need to worry about flexing your foot so much anymore since the knee is no longer suspended in air, in midair. Wherever you are, make your way back to center, plant both feet on the earth. This time, left ankle comes on top of the right leg, and you can stay here in the stretch if that is enough for you. And you can if you want to take the twist um, in, from this position, you can just drop your knee here. Even if you're pulling your leg closer, sometimes this can feel better when you do the twist or dropping your leg. So experiment with that, see which is more fun, what feels better to you today and it could be different today than it is next time you practice so and then if you want to take a that twist leg drop variation from wherever you are um, take whichever one you want just let your legs fall gently to the right this time you can even let your left knee fall towards you a little bit if that feels good. And coming back to center, release your legs back to the earth. Now from here we're going to do just a quick traction of our legs and low spine. So feet are planted firmly on the earth, I want you to press Get your, the heels of your hands way up into your hips, right where your femurs come into your hips, and press gently down your legs. So you do want a firm press um, to get that traction, but you don't want to press so hard that you hurt your legs or anything like that. So a gentle but firm press right where the femurs hook into your hip bone. Get a bit of traction. And from here, you can take your final resting pose either as a reclined butterfly, if you want to get into your inner thighs a bit more, stretch out that area, or you can extend your legs long. And come to a comfortable Shavasana here. here for a couple of minutes, really settle into that practice. 
into your new neutral. I hope you enjoyed that flow and that you enjoyed learning a little bit more about how to do crow pose. Have fun with that, keep doing it, keep practicing uh, crow. It's a tough pose, but it is a lot of fun and there's a lot of variations um, that you can try with it as well. So I hope you enjoyed that. I definitely look forward to seeing you on the mat again. And of course, be sure to uh, subscribe to the League of Nerdy Yogi's email list because you have exclusive content waiting for you there. Namaste.